Hello and welcome back to Surly Tim's. Now in this episode I'm going to cover a film by the name of The House of Exorcism from 1975, but it was originally released under the name Lisa and the Devil in 1973. And although the release information varies regionally, it's obvious that the film was part of the same rush of demonic possession films as The Exorcist was. And a few sources claim, debatably, a release of several days preceding the release of its more successful competition. In my opinion, this wasn't the best example of the work of director Mario Bava. It was a testament to the talent of the cast. Elkie Summers of 1964's A Shot in the Dark, one of the many sequels to the Pink Panther franchise, and opposite Dean Martin in the Matt Helm film The Wrecking Crew from 1968. Robert Elda, father of MASH's Alan Elda, of The Devil's Hand in 1961, and a jack of all trades in a realm of television spanning over 30 years, among them alongside his son and two episodes of MASH, and once alongside his House of Exorcism co-star, Telly Savalas, of 1967's Dirty Dozen, On Her Majesty's Secret Service from 1969, and Kelly's Heroes from 1970 fame, although he will always be known as a no-nonsense inspector, Theo Kojak. I would describe the film in two words, slow and disjointed, but it highlights the talents of Summers as the demon-possessed Lisa Reiner, or Elena, and Alda's Father Michael, although his role goes unnoticed by IMDb. In my opinion, Summers pushes the envelope with her performance and highlights the depth of her skills that dwarves her more light-hearted roles that I have personally seen. Now, I gave the writing for this movie a zero. As I said, it was very slow and disjointed. I felt the acting deserved a .5, as the only real roles that I thought were above par were Alda's and Summers. And despite Baba's reputation as a great director, I gave it a .5. Like I said, I don't think this was an example of his best work. Now, I gave the production a .5. I thought the lighting and the sets just only helped to make the, the story more muddled. And in my opinion, I thought it was kind of an average film. So I gave it a 0.5, with a total of 2. Now this one's definitely on my to-go pile. Not because it was a horrible movie, but I just can't see the sense in keeping it in my collection. So who knows who will be lucky enough to inherit my copy. But thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.